Hi everyone, my name's Brian, and don't click away! I, I know what you're thinking, and it's what you thought. This is the deck that I did in a previous video where <clears throat> it did poorly. Uh, in fact, it did so bad that when I got to the end of the video and I even won a match, I was so salty I wasn't giving any commentary. So I hilariously sped up the footage so that you could see <laughs> I did do the matches. They just went so bad and it was so one-sided. I almost nixed the video and I showed you that comedy routine. But I've been getting into a slightly different type of video lately where rather than, you know, I go off in my little corner and I try and create these decks, I bring you guys along for the ride. So what we're gonna do today and over the course of hopefully a couple of different days, give me some time to kind of think about how things are doing, is we're gonna play this deck you see in front of you, but we're gonna come in and tune it. Now, last video I did, I said I was going to do that as well with a dredge deck, but I was too far into the tuning process to actually show you guys any changes. I had tuned it at that point. So this deck is exactly how it was in the video that absolutely flopped. And if you're one of the 80 people who watched that video, thank you very much. And hopefully this video will make up for my hilarious failure last time. So let's do a super quick deck tech on this because this is going to change a lot. Now, what this deck is trying to do is use Eldrazi Temples to hyper out big Eldrazi threats and Wasteland Strangler. <laughs> what this deck actually does is nothing and then dies. So as you can tell, it's already been upgraded to recent things. It has Esper Sentinels, Dorothy Voidwalkers, Paths, which might turn into something else soon, Vindicate. These are all cards that are new to the format with, you know, a couple of standby old favorites. But this mishmash that I made just doesn't work. And I feel like this deck can work it just needs some massaging. Along with this sideboard, I feel like a lot of these sideboard cards are going to go in the main, but spoilers. So first thing we're going to do is play this deck as is and see how badly we get stomped. And then we're going to try and fix it over, so over a series of a handful of games. Join me, won't you? Okay, so we got a bite. Uh, and as is tradition, we lose the die roll. Okay, so let's look at our hand here. Not a ton of land, and we have big Stompy here as, as well as Lingering Souls, but we do have a Thought Season and Esper Sentinel, so I don't think we can ask for much better. Let's see what our opponent's up to in Overgrown Tomb. Are we getting Thought? No. Tapped. Okay, that's great. So now the question is, do we want a Thought Seize or Esper Sentinel? Let's Razi Temple. Well, we have no Thought Not Seer in hand, and even if we draw one next turn, that's not going to help. So I think what we do is we play Silent Clearing and we Thought Seize, and we see what our opponent's up to. <laughs> Well, we'll certainly see if it's any good. Uh, this appears to be some sort of reanimator deck. We'll take Persist. Okay, well, we have a lot of graveyard hate for game two and game three if we make it that far, but this deck can go off really quick, and we're playing a little fair. But they're going to Grizzly Salvage at end of turn. Okay, so we draw a Wasteland Strangler. So I think what we do is we play out the Eldrazi Temple, because if we find another Eldrazi Temple... The next turn we get to play out Smashy. But we'll play Esper Sentinel. They'll go ahead and Grizzly in response. Yep, fine. Just pitch the top fight. Let's see what they're up to here. Up. Oh. oh no, they're just gonna... Oh, never mind. We don't get to draw because that was on the stack. Okay, so that's pretty much our entire turn. The next turn we hope to top deck a Smasher. Otherwise, we can just play Lingering Souls. They really don't have any super good creatures in the yard, so it's not a problem yet. We don't know a lot of their hand anymore, though. Iron Void. Sure. Okay. And we draw another Wasteland Strangler, which doesn't do anything without anything in Exile. So we'll play Mistress Factory. We'll go to Combat. See what they do about Esper Sentinel. I have a 1-1. One, one. Fear me. They don't do anything about it. Okay. So let's just play Lingering Souls and pass. Because we have plenty to discard to Archons and stuff if they somehow can chew one out. We have Wasteland Stranglers that are going to do us no favors. I think as much as I love Wasteland Strangler and as much as he is you know, an integral part of Black White Eldrazi, and why would you would want to play Black White Eldrazi? I think he's just gotten so outclassed that he might get replaced pretty soon. We might just see this deck become Mono White Eldrazi, really just playing off of Eldrazi Displacer and Thought Lots here. I honestly don't know yet. All right, our opponent is thinking hard about our end step. They might have another Grizzly Salvage, or they might have some sort of removal spell, thinking if they want to let us draw with Esper Sentinel, probably, which, I mean, our deck is so weak that... I don't think uh, letting us draw another card is going to be detrimental to their game plan. Nope, they just pass. 
All right, they play a forest, so they can just run out Rhino if they want, which, you know, wouldn't be the worst thing. Yeah, this looks like what's happening here. Okay, so they just run out Rhino. Luckily, they don't have the mana to ephemerate it, so we can just path that and then attack with our uh, little creatures and all that. Hopefully, we draw, like, a uh, mana source of some sort. Okay, I still think we path the Rhino now while we can. Now, we can either hit them with a Mishra's Factory, or we could just flash back Lingering Souls. I think flashing back Lingering Souls is just important. Also, another problem you're seeing with this deck is it has a very, very painful mana base without any, you know, way to gain back land. Back in the day, this was playing uh, Shambling Vents, but Shambling Vents has been replaced with Mishra's Factory. I don't know if that's right, but, you know, it, it's what it is. We take another damage, as our Lingering Souls. I mean, we have a clock. We have a clock, but they have a deck that does stuff. Another Grizzly Salvage. We get a card, or... Nope, looks like they're gonna pay for it. They can still Grizzly Salvage into a Persist if they have another one. Uh, yep. Jub and Shards. Looks like they put a Rhino in their hand. And now they have their own Lingering Souls to counter our Lingering Souls. Luckily for us, Reality Smasher uh, does not care about little Wimpy 1-1s. All right, they pass. If we weren't at... Oh, there's... <laughs> There's Voidwalker, which I think changes the plan. I think even though we have to take two to do this, we should play Voidwalker because it kind of turns off their deck a bit. And then we just attack with uh, two spirit tokens because we kind of have to be on the defensive. We are at eight and we don't have any life gain in the main. Uh, if I were them, I'd just take this. Really? Oh, they're going to trade one for one and let one go. That makes sense, I suppose. I mean, if they path Voidwalker as well, that's actually not the worst because that then allows us to play Smash without getting hurt. A bone shards... So what, they're, disc they're going to discard probably Archon or the other Rhino. Oh, but it went into... Oh, they sacrificed one of their spirit tokens. Ah, uh, was this just another Rhino? Oh, it's going to be another Rhino. <laughs> oh no, they just kept being Persist. Another Bone Shards. Are they really that upset about Esper Sentinel? Surely when your opponent's at 8, you just attack with another Rhino. Or you get Persist back and you're, like, really good to go. Plus they have a Persistent Hand, which I'm sure we'll find out soon. Ooh, another Esper Sentinel. As much fun as it would be to trigger them with that, I don't believe that's the correct thing to do. I think we do take one and we play out Mr. Smash. We're trying to close this game out quick at this point. And we attack with almost everything, leaving one up as Blocker. And if they want to sack a creature for Ewit, that's fine. They go to 9, so we're not in lethal range anyway unless we top deck another smasher looks like persist yeah okay so here comes archon which deals not an insignificant amount of damage so we sacrifice a tap token we discard a strangler we drop to four now if we could deal lethal next turn they'd be forced to block but i don't think oh no and they just have siege rhino <laughs> remember how i said my deck does nothing then dies that's what we're seeing now. I don't think there's a single card that can save us at this point. Yeah, they attack with Ewit because we have to block. All right, what else we got here? Caves of Coilus. So, nope. All of our lands somehow deal us damage. We don't even have that many pain lands in the deck, I don't think. We'll run the numbers during the tuning session. But what do we want again? Right, Sanctifier, yes. Kaya's Guile, yes. Leyline of Sanctity, probably unnecessary. Chalice, no. Negate. Probably slow. I mean, the Stranglers are just bad. These come out. Paths are fine. Esper Sentinels are good. Hand Disruption's okay. It's not the best. It's okay. I think Reality Smashers are just too much for this deck. I think Reality Smashers without Tron Lands might just be a little bit too much for a deck like this to handle. So if we take those out like that, and then we get three pieces of creature that kind of disrupt what they're trying to do, two more other pieces of Graveyard Hate... Do we want any more Vind- Well, if we take out the two final Smashers, we just give up on Smasher. We can try going Vindicate in our pile of other stuff here. We could try it like that. But yes, we have our silly, you know, bad brew versus our opponent's kind of tuned deck. I have so many pain lands. So first turn, Sentinel. Second turn, Displacer. Probably the best we can hope for. This way, if they do anything on turn one, we get to draw a card. So Esper Sentinel... It was proud. Shambling vents. Okay, so it's just to play out. Okay, so turn four is even going to be Thought Not Seer, which is nice. I'm thinking hard about Aldrazi Displacer. Probably, you know, there's a, there's a chance our opponent has never seen this card. This this was like the terror of 2016. All right. I mean, that's probably the strongest start our deck has, as sad as that is. All right, so they have Grizzly Salvage Mana. Seder Wayfinder. That's whatever. So they're going to reveal four, and they can put a land into play. Field not held. Uh, so they kept the Overgrown Tomb. Their top four was just full of cabbage, though. Kind of annoying they're not going to draw that. Thought Not Seer. I still think that's correct. So first things first, we swing. You can actually get your opponent in a bit of a lock by flickering Thought Not Seer. That 
doesn't always work for me personally, but it might be how we win this game against combo, just trying to pick off their hand one by one by one. There's no reason not to block here. Oh, unless we're going to, like, ephemerate the Seder Wayfinder or something. Yeah, no, they just took three. I guess that just <laughs> shows how little they care. All right, we'll play the shiny one. Here's our Thought Not Seer. It was cheaper because oil, and oil looks awful on Mitko. All right, what's your hand look like? Burial Lights, Fulminator Mage, Persist. So I guess we actually take Fulminator Mage. And then next turn, unless they happen to draw something, they really don't have a turn. Their hand is mostly cabbage. But untaps and draws. Plays the Godless Shrine, tapped, but they must not have anything. Uh, I'm not going to flicker the Thought Knots here. I'm just going to attack with my guys. And then I'm going to just cast another Thought Knots here because having another body on board might just be better. I mean, they have two pieces anyway, so we couldn't even flicker Thought Knot twice to remove all the combo pieces from their hand and just leave them with lands. Also, they could just draw into more. They finally give up on Seder Wayfinder. Another Ephemerate. Ephemerate. So, Indicate, Ephemerate. So, the Field of Ruins has entered their hand. Things like Seder Wayfinder cause really weird interactions. So, now that it's our second main, we'll just go ahead and play our other Thought Knots here. Hopefully, I guess we take Persist and leave them Burial Rites, because unless they find a... Oh, nope, they're just done. Okay. So, that was just us winning with big creatures, and I don't actually miss... Reality Smasher. I think that's the last game Reality Smasher is going to be in is that first one. Uh, do I want to change anything? I don't believe so. I think this is the best this gets. Uh, I don't think this is a keepable hand. I think that's too much land. Um, I mean, this stonewalls them. So we'll put the planes back because we saw their field of ruin. There's the triome. We don't want any more land, so we'll play a marsh flats and just yield through. Looks like they're not going to do much. So we'll wait till end step and then we'll crack. Go get a godless and then next turn just slam Sanctifier. I guess we don't need to thin right now. Save ourselves a damage. And white, white, and ha ha. Hope you brought in engineered explosives. All right, but it has to let that go. I don't know if they'd have a way to kill that. I mean, other than just walking with a uh, Eternal Witness. When it plays a Godless Shrine, untap, so they must be doing something. Vindicate, uh, I was gonna do that to you next turn, man. <laughs> I too have a Vindicate and I would love to use it. All right, Thought Knots here, so. I guess we're taking three anyway. Shrine, sure thing. All right, well, we have two beaters. What do you have, opponent? Sanctifier Invec, coming in hot. So I just want to point out, if we win this match, based on what we drew, it's not because it was Black White Aldrazi, it's because it was Black White Modern Horizons good stuff. Opponent is in Siege Rhino range. Seder Wayfinder, okay. Dampening Sphere. Man, somebody hates uh, uh, the forest. No, the swamp is in their hand. Somebody really dislikes Eldrazi Temple. <laughs> Putting in Damping Sphere for Aldrazi Temple, that's that's another level. Uh, huh. Vindicating a land doesn't do much, does it? Vindicating Seder Wayfinder also seems kind of salty. We'll just attack with the two Sanctifiers, see what they do. I mean, if they have Mutagenic Growth, got us. i take the two. We can't Thought Not Seer, so we can Esper Sentinel, or we can Lingering Souls. I think Lingering Souls might just be the better move right now. They don't have much. They don't have much. Oh, man, but we have four drops, and they blew up one of our lands, which is affecting us a lot more than I would like. We'll swing with everything, and this turn we get to play both Esper Sentinel and our second half of our Lingering Souls, but what happened here is we drew our sideboard pieces, and we're hating them out. Oh, it, oh, oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> So they get to eat one of our sanctifiers because we're bad at magic. All right, well, we know not to do that twice. So Esper Sentinel, and then black and a thing. Lingering Souls. Man, you ever disrespect stirring Wildwood so much it eats one of your hate pieces? Unmarked Grave. So what, they must have an angel. Like, what else would they have that they could put into their bin? Because a lot of the reanimation targets are black, I think. So it's like the Sarah's angel and they get protection from something and they can name protection from creatures. Dra oh, what are they got to do with that. They put that in the bin. I mean, it's like, it's a neat card, but I'm not entirely sure what they think that's going to do. Uh, we can cast our big guy now, which I think is right. Take a look at what there's going on in their hand there. Unburial lights, ephemerate, persist. So I think we take ephemerate and then we attack with the flyers. I don't want them gaining too much life. Yeah, no, you can eat one of them. I don't care. I'm busy dealing you damage. All right. They're at seven. We're at 14. They persist. The They have to choose to put it in with plus one plus ones. Otherwise, it's just there to gain four life. Yeah, they can blow up Esper Sentinel or they can 
Yeah, so they just did that to gain four life, which is fine. Because we're almost at the point where they don't land. They play the swamp. So their hand is literally unburial rights, overgrown tomb. And they can eat another spirit token for all I care. They want to reanimate stirring wildwood and get hit for six. Because our thought not seer will take their last card out of their hand. And we still have one basic if they want to field of ruin us. But I think they want to leave stirring wildwood as a blocker. Otherwise, they take an extra three. All right. Seems like our opponent's just happy with uh, leaving Stirring Wildwood up as a blocker. Dothy Voidwalker. Hmm. I mean, again, if they're just playing defense, I think we still take the card that does something out of their hand because it's an overgrown tomb and an unburial, right? So now they just have nothing. So if they, like, top deck Archon or something, that's a little annoying, but we have a Vindicate. Oh, here they come. Here comes Speed Racer. They can either stop the four damage or they can just eat another Spirit Token, which is fine. They choose to do nothing, which is slightly concerning. Oh, and we win the match. Our opponent uh, has said knight. They realize the minus one counter kills it before it can come into play. And let's go ahead and take a look at our deck. Uh, so I'm going to stop recording for the sake of my editing, and then we will be right back. All right, so what performed well, what didn't perform? So I think Reality Smasher is just too much of an ask. Thought Not Seer seems to be where we want the deck to top out. Because Reality Smasher just isn't really doing it. You need to have two Eldrazi Temples to play it with any sort of regularity. And there's only four Eldrazi Temples. Also, I want to take a look at our pain to non-pain lands here and see if we're doing something wrong. But the other parts of the deck I was actually kind of okay with, minus Wasteland Strangler. So I think we're going to go ahead and take these seven cards out. Let's go ahead and just bop those away right now. So we have seven open slots to play with. Now, I think Vindicate is just good enough to play main. And also, we did just take out three pieces of removal. So if we put in the two... Vindicates. Now that causes a slight issue only because some of what we were playing was a body and a piece of removal, but we're not playing Flicker Wisp, so it's not like Eldrazi Displacer was removal for everything. It was just removal for creatures and, and pretty small creatures at that. So I think what we want to put in with some of our remaining slots are Skyclave Apparitions. Skyclave Apparitions, also a three drop. They don't have the benefit of getting hypered out by Eldrazi Temple, but I think Eldrazi Temple is fine to have in the deck solely for Thought Not Seer and for Eldrazi Displacer. So let's go ahead and put in some number of these. So even putting in some number of Skyclave Apparitions, we still have two slots open. Now, we could put in a little bit more hand disruption. We could play with putting a Kai's Guile in, or we could even try putting in a little bit more removal in Prismatic Ending. Now, the thing about Prismatic Ending is we could only remove one drops and two drops in it. We could also try playing March of Otherworldly Light. But the problem with March of Otherworldly Light is <laughs> Eldrazi Displacer actually isn't a white card. Also, I don't have them right now. That's the same reason we're not going to be using Solitude. Because Solitude with Eldrazi Displacer... Does sound like a fun combo, but those are very expensive cards, and this is a tier 7 deck at best. So, what what are we thinking here? We're thinking this is a deck kind of based around big stompy creatures, evasive creatures, and a lot of removal. We're kind of missing things in the 2-drop slot, but we don't have enough open spots unless we remove the Skyclave Apparitions and the Vindicate if we wanted to do some sort of strange Stoneforge Mystic package. Now, there is an argument to be made that we just kind of end up making... Uh, black white dead guy ale in modern which would just be a bad version of the ephemerate deck so are there any two drops that are worth putting in here i suppose it could be tide hollow sculler but tide hollow sculler without wasteland strangler seems a little weak we could always just take a peek at what's even in our card pool all right so what's in our card pool for modern in black and white gear of ruins interesting plague engineer i don't think that's as good as it used to be Let's go ahead and change by mana values. Go to two. See what we have here. Now, I've seen people use Charming Prince. I've never had great luck with it, but I guess with Eldrazi Displacer, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It might be worth just testing with. We could put a Thalia in. I mean, we, we play some number of Vindicates and Lingering Souls, though. So maybe, maybe Thalia is not the best option. We can put in a Dam, but the thing about Dam is Wrathing it kind of undoes our plan. I also have other taxes decks. We could take a peek at what's in the two drops. So this is Thalia's Stoneforge and Leonin's, which 
all don't work. That's oh, what's this. Yeah, Arbiters and Thalias don't exactly work. Dark Confidant. <laughs> how how brave are we with Dark Confidant? I mean, I suppose greatness at any cost, right? <laughs> Even the one where we get destroyed by our own creature. Where is where is Bob? Ooh, this feels greedy, but we're we're brewing. I mean, if Dark Confidant's just better than some of our three drops, we might we might play around with nixing lingering souls and some of the other three drops for a Stoneforge package if if Bob is just good. So we have to put two cards in the sideboard. Pious Guile seems like a sideboard card. Chalices seem like a good sideboard card. Needle's good. Sanctifier's great. Push is okay. Maybe just put in two more Ley Lines for now until I can think of something better. Now, Mitgo, I know for a fact I have more Ley Lines of Sanctity. Why are you? Why, why are you like this? Why can't you be more like your younger brother, Magic Arena? Is is wrong. Reset all filters. Fine. Let's do that then. Oh, because it's not dealt with it. All right. We might have to cut some of that. Out. Uh oh. I don't have two. I don't have a third. Oh, it's just different art. There we are. Could have sworn I had one through dredge. Do we want to try? No. I think path is fine for now. We might play with prismatic ending and putting in different things later. Oh, the lands. I said we were gonna look at the lands. Okay. So four caves of Coilos hurt us. So that's four. And two silent clearings hurt us. So. <laughs> Six lands out of 23 deal us damage every turn. Now, I realize the, the shrines and the fetches hurt us too, but that's once. Whereas the Caves of Coilos and the, <laughs> the, the Silent Clearings actively punch us in the face every turn. I don't know why I keep just drawing Caves of Coilos and <laughs> Silent Clearings, but th that seems fine. That doesn't seem like it should do us as much damage as it is, but... I don't know. Let's run it back and see if we just keep hurting ourselves. I also realize saying that we gain no life and we're now playing two bobs is absolutely counterproductive, but we're brewing here. We're not making an amazing magic deck. So, okay, let's run it like this and let's see if we just punch ourselves in the face for 25 minutes. All right. And we lost the die roll because what else do we do here? Uh, two lands. One of the ones that hurts me. Thank you, magic deck. Two four drops. Two one drops and now Skyclave. I think we have to throw this back. A Vindicate. Oh, man. I think we might have made the deck worse, guys. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep and we'll put, I guess, Vindicate back. Because we have two other pieces of removal. We don't need three. Maybe maybe Vindicate main board's a little greedy and that needs to be more Skyclaves, maybe. Unless Vindicates. All right, what's our opponent up to? Looks like it's just going to be a fetch land and pass. So we will play this tapped it's fine don't think we need to take two damage against an unknown deck reading pool tapped so low chance there's a ragavan coming at us and we feel bad about putting in a land tapped chromatic star sea chrome coast some sort of ad nause or combo okay so this time we take the two damage and we rip out void walker which was actually an amazing draw last turn okay so void walker on the field hopefully that stops whatever combos going on here i feel like this is a combo deck it might be like thopter foundry or something Esper Sentinel. So let's go ahead and attack with Void Walker. See if that baits out anything. Because maybe we just play Esper Sentinel and leave Path to Exile up. That might be better because I don't know what they're doing. So we'll play out Esper Sentinel and we'll just pass, leaving up Path or the getting Skyclave Apparition. Okay, so screwing with their graveyard is causing a problem, but there's nothing we can do to perfect protect a Void Walker right now. Oh, but they're going to play Sentinel. Okay, so we'll eat Sentinel unless we draw a land and then we'll rip Skyclave out of their hand. Well, would you, wouldn't you know? <laughs> so how about them apples? Oh, it's the Tamishi combo. So goodbye removal. And we'll punch you again with our shadow creature. So Tamishi gets unlimited mana and then they, they kill us somehow. Up, oh, looks like they're done. So we want a lot of sideboard hate. I think we want the chalices too, because we can then counter their, their Lotus Bloom. So chalices and Deathling Silence, yes. I mean, Kaya's Guile as Graveyard Hate seems a little slow. But, like, what do we want to take out, Brian says, looking at Vindicate? I think Vindicate is just not good enough now that I'm thinking about it. Skyclave seems fine. Especially for bringing in Deafening Silences, taking the Vindicates out seem correct. The Lingering Souls are even looking ish. So do we take out two Lingering Soul? Oh, no. We need to take out one more card anyway, so that's a Lingering Soul. 
So do we take out two more Lingering Souls for Kaya's Guile? Because they make tokens. And it's another way to blow up their graveyard. Kaya's Guile just seems good in this matchup. So two Kaya's Guile, take out two Lingering Souls. So that's the in-out. We'll try it like that. Maybe we should have brought in Pithing Needle for Tamishi, but I have to admit I've never actually played against this deck. I've seen people online play it. This is a hand with no colored mana. This is a hand with a hate piece, and we can just put the Godless Shrine back. Let's do that. So there's the Lotus Bloom. <laughs> this hurts so much that they're going to do so much zero mana stuff before we have a chance to do anything. So first things first, we'll just cast this on zero. Just no cap. If it resolves, I feel great. Amazing. All right, we'll get a Godless Shrine. I feel like our life total is not super important in this game, and we'll play Esper Sentinel. So Skyclave Apparition can also nip a lot of their stuff as opposed to the old Wasteland Strangler, which really couldn't do a ton. They do have their own Skyclaves, which will be able to hit our Chalice. But we just drew a Thought Seize, which I feel like is an important thing to draw. So we play a land. We get in with Esper Sentinel. Maybe we should have Thought Seized first, but whatever. They have a Snapcaster Mage. They have a Snapcaster Mage. I've, I've been gotten many times by the Ambush Viper, <laughs> you know, Snapcaster Mage. Two Tamishis and an Eldrani's Call. So I guess we'll get rid of the toolbox piece. Because if they play a Tamishi next turn, we have Skyclave Apparition, and then we can just start displacing Skyclave Apparition. So they draw an extra card off for Mistress Bobble, and their Lotus Bloom continues to tick down. They have to get rid of the Chalice somehow. The problem is we know their hand, and it's just... Yeah, so there's a Tamishi, which that'll that'll disappear next turn. Go get another Godless Shrine. Does that change anything? No, no, not really. So... Good to know that these black-white decks are still really good against combo. We take Tamishi and we attack with Esper Sentinel. We're far from winning, <laughs> but I also feel like we're actively stopping them from having any fun, which in Magic is half the battle. So this is going to get countered. Oh, and they have to pay one for Esper Sentinel or we draw a card? Oh man, Esper Sentinel Chalice is fun. Oh, they do pay it. Ah, you dog. So we only know one Tamishi in their hand. And other than that, they really don't have much going on. This Chalice on zero probably saved our bacon. Inquisition. Inquisition. I think that might be. Because then we can just put the Tamishi in the yard. Tamishi, reshape. So reshape allows them to put something directly into the field where the Tamishi is a combo piece and they kind of need that. So yeah, you can go get a Lotus Bloom if you want and put your big dumb thing into play. Uh, that's totally fine. Really don't have any, any lands in hand, so it would be a 4-4. <laughs> and we can bounce it with Displacer, which is fine. So they're going to do what now? Nothing. That's what I thought. Because it's a sorcery, so they have to reshape on their turn. So they have to pay two mana to get the the guy, the, the Lotus Bloom. Yeah, no, they can't do that because then I just eat it with Skyclave Apparition. There's another Esper Sentinel, which, you know, I feel like is the correct thing to play because if they're going to do anything, then I want to tax the daylights out of them. Don't think they have anything, so we'll just swing it with everything, start trying to close this game out. When it goes to eight, and that's the match. So an easy 2-0 against combo. So let's go ahead and go back to the brewing board there and see if there's anything else we want to change with the deck. All right, so here we are back at the deck. Vindicate is weird because it really does seem like a bit of a win more given how this curve works. Like, everything else seemed fine, and when I don't draw nothing but pain lands, the mana base even seems okay. Thought Not Seer was great. Eldrazi Displacer was great. Esper Sentinel was amazing. Path is fine, and in that game it shows that Path is better than Prismatic Ending, at least in this deck. The amount of hand disruption is fine. Yeah, really the only thing main board that I'm still kind of scratching my head are the Lingering Souls and the Vindicates. In the sideboard, the pushes seem kind of ish. Chalices were great. Those won us the game. Deafening Silence. Haven't gotten a chance. I, I bought those so long ago. I haven't had a chance to cast them, but I'm sure they too will be fine <laughs> whenever I get my chance to actually use them. So what would be better than Vindicate? I mean, we could get more bobs and really push the idea that we're trying to trying to bob. Because hand, hand size is always a problem for these black-white decks. That's why the old Dead Guy Ale decks were playing, I think, four bobs. So we can we can do more bobs, maybe. What, take out two Vindicates, leave one Vindicate main board, and our removals then are four paths, three Skyclave Apparitions, so seven pieces of removal, three of which can be blinked. And then Eldrazi Displacer is really just here to blink our opponent's stuff and Thought Knots here, which seems fine? 
I mean, not amazing, but fine. I gotta buy more bobs though. And if I'm buying stuff, is there anything I wanna buy? Like, do I wanna try different lands? Do I want to try like flip lands? Do I wanna try more basic lands? Cause this deck actually seems pretty, hold on, let's, let's sort via color. Yeah, so it's still significantly more white than it is black. Like what would I take out for a second planes? Like the concealed courtyard, the one of? or one of the Mishra's factories and just have one Mishra's factory, but then that could sort of a colorless source, which we need for eight of our cards. I mean, I don't think bobs are expensive. I'm, I'm gonna buy a couple more bobs. We're gonna take the Vindicates out. We're gonna put the bobs in, and then we're gonna play a practice game like that and see see how the deck does. Oh my God, we want a die roll. Is that is that a good omen or a bad? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, well, we wanted, we wanted to test Bob. Bob has shown up. Funny thing when you put four in your deck. So here we go, guys. Let's let's see if Bob is good in this deck or if I if I broke it, <laughs> might have broke it. Uh, opponent is currently mulling to five. Another combo deck. That'd be interesting. All right. So play us a Marsh Flats and yield and see what our opponent does. Also, if you're wondering how much the two more Dark Confidants cost me, it was... 275 American. Tron. Uh, Eldrazi and Taxes is good against Tron. I don't know about Blackwell Eldrazi. We don't have any land disruption, actually. Uh, let's get a Godless Shrine. No, we're good. All right. Uh, actually, do we play out the Eldrazi Temple or the Marsh Flats? I think the Temple's fine. We'll be able to play anything we draw next turn anyway. All right. Greatness at any cost. Save us, Bob. Save us with your card advantage. Save us from Tron that's about to do Tron things. Relic of Regenitus, sure. I am happy if all you do this turn is Relic. Look how big my smile is. I'm so happy. I was really hoping they'd play a map because I'd be able to Skyclave it. All right, let's see what we draw. Oof. <laughs> There's the four drop. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Voidwalker's bad. I think we play Thought Not Seer. I think we attack and then we play Thought Not Seer. Oh, man. Oh, no. We, we picked up the Voidwalker. Okay. That's actually much better. I thought... I thought Voidwalker would, would be in our hand first if that happened, but Thought Not Seer was in, in that place. Okay, so now we play just a Plains is probably fine. And look at us. We're we're the unfair land deck now. Please don't have Tron. Please, 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 please. Aww. Uh, I guess we take Karn and just kind of leave him stranded. <laughs> you know, you can have Tron. It just doesn't do anything. Yep, they're drawing they're drawing a card trying to find something to do with their seven mana. Because Karn the Great No, not Karn the Great Green there. Karn Liberated is still kind of unfortunate at this point. Did I just summon Karn? Oh, it's Expo Map. So they can go get green? And then Ancient Stirring's trying to find a good card. Yavi Maya. They got Yavi Maya? Okay. Alright. How much do we punch ourselves for? Thought not seer. Okay, that time that time we drew it. So I think we thought not seer again, we take their ancient stirrings. So we play Marsh Flats, but we won't have to do anything with it, and we hit them. Bob is showing us how much damage he can deal by finding our four drops. To be fair, we're playing four four drops, although we we already have two. So he can't possibly deal us that more damage, right? He said, trying to believe even himself. All right, so this should take care of Ancient Stirring. So now they have the top deck. Otherwise, they can just get more lands, and I don't think there's any lands that take out two four fours, at least not quickly. I mean, they can get a Blast Zone, but we'll get another hit in before that's a problem. Chromatic Star. Okay, so they drew a star. They get a redraw. We uh we don't have any artifact hate. I wonder if that's a thing in modern anymore. They play Avimaya, so they have as much green mana as they want. There's the scrying. Like, what do they get? Because all I can think is Blast Zone. The Seiju. To blow up what? The Eldrazi Temple? Are Eldrazi already in play? All right, let me thin the deck because I'm dumb and I want Bob to hurt me. I must enjoy it. I put four of them in the deck. All right, no, I don't want to pay two. All right, Bob, what do you find? Mistress Factory. Uh, but there's the other no Thought Not Seer. You jerk. You jerk deck you. I see what you're doing and I don't like it. All right, let's swing with the clowns. If you want to destroy Eldrazi Temple in response, that's fine. All right, so now, before they have a chance to do anything, the thoughtiest of Not Seers. Apparently all we need to do is just keep drawing Thought Not Seers and we can beat any deck. <laughs> Okay, so they have nothing. Uh, that's fine. We can play a Godless Shrine and play another Dark Confidant. I think that's wrong. I think we play out the uh, the Voidwalker. I mean, we have lethal so many ways. I suppose they can just have an O Stone though. Oh, nope, that's game one. Bob felt good in that one. We we ended the game with many lands in hand. Uh, I guess Vindicate would have been good to have in the sideboard to go against Tron to remove Tron. 
What do we want to do though? I guess Pithing Needle is okay. What's bad? Skyclave Apparitions aren't great. They can't hit Planeswalkers, can they? Like it can hit Karn the Greeker. I think Path isn't where we want to be because by the time we're pathing something, we're already dead. So let's take the paths out. Confidants are good. Voidwalkers are fine. They're not amazing. They're just fine. The Vindicate is good. Fault Not Seers worked well. His placers are fine. So like, what do we put in instead of Path to Exile? I guess we can put Chalices in and try and Chalice on one to stop all their little artifacts, but I don't know if that's great. Try it, he said as he puts a one drop into his deck. And we just leave one path in and we just see if we can do that. It's like normally against Tron, you want to interact with their Tron pieces, where last game we just interacted with their hand until they didn't have a hand. Thoughts use a Bob, an Esper Sentinel, and a path. Well, that's the only path in the deck. I think this is fine. You know, this guy's mulling pretty aggressively. He mulled a five, so he's keeping a hand that will give him Tron. So I believe because he's going first, we have to Thought Seize him. And hopefully that stops him from getting Tron. As much fun as it would be to get Esper Sentinel down, turn one, and stop him that way. To play Godless Shrine, take two. Thought Seize our opponent and hopefully find the Sylvan Scrying of the map. Relic of Progenitus, Worm Coil, Ballista, Wa Okay, so we take Relic because it's the only card that does anything. So he didn't keep a good hand at all. So next turn, if he doesn't draw a land, we just get to dunk on him. Bah! <laughs> Boo, change the story, boo. Oh man, never punished, huh? Here comes a walking ballista for one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna kill whatever we play, unless we play Voidwalker to try and play around it, but I think we actually want him to, to kill whatever we put out there so he just doesn't have a walking ballista. So what's more important, Esper Sentinel or Dark Confidant? I think Dark Confidant's more important. So we can Esper Sentinel. Because we don't want to, we don't want to give him any more lands. And if he wants to kill Esper Sentinel with Walking Ballista, that is a trade I'm willing to make. Don't play a land. Don't play a land. We can play a. Bo oh no, that's even worse. Okay, so he's probably not going to attack because he he's in no rush now. We need to find a land so we can vindicate. Ha ha. Okay, so black. No, we'll just make that white. Make our lives easier. White, colorless, black. Vindicate. It's a blast zone or. Urza's Tower. I think it's Urza's Tower. It'll take him a while. Either that or Forest, but I think that's fine. Okay, so that's sorted, or at least that slows him down. Uh, yeah, I still would love to trade. You want to trade? Nah, you just want to attack me next turn for one damage because I deal myself so much. That's fine. Next turn we'll have Bob. Hopefully that's a more tempting target. <laughs> oh boy. Sylvan Scrying. Hey, Brian, remember when you had a chance to take his green source out and you didn't because you're silly? And then he immediately found the piece you blew up. That was fun. So I guess at this point he just gets, yeah, hers is mine. And we don't have any more Vindicates because we permanently took them out of the deck. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's on us. Uh, land would be fine. Another Dark Confidant. You know what? Greatness at any cost. So our creatures draws a whole bunch of cards now. If he has another land, he'll probably try and kill both our things, which is fine. We have another Bob in hand. There's the mine. So he can now start pumping Walking Ballista, which means we might have to path it, which is unfortunate because that gets him closer to... Hmm. Oh, he's just going to kill Bob. Okay. I mean, I guess he can blow up Blast Zone and kill Esper Sentinel as well if he really wants to. Let's go to combat and just kill Esper Sentinel or attack with Esper Sentinel. I'm assuming Esper Sentinel is going to die soon. Also, if they just naturally drew into Tron, that's unfortunate. But we do have a path in hand to get rid of the Worm Coil Engine uh, because apparently playing one ofs is correct. Let's play another Bob, try and get our card advantage on. So far, Bob is uh, doing his job of just eating removal. So Worm Coil Engine and an unknown in our opponent's hand. All right, Moo, uh, just looks like he's yielding through his turn. Cool. Lingering Souls, dealt ourself three. Do we Thought Seize? I think we can. I don't think there's anything in his hand that has haste, so we have time to path. Take out Worm Coil. So, they have nothing in hand now. We may as well play Void Walker. I mean, they're, they're pretty much hoping that Bob kills us now, which, you know, I've done before. <laughs> you know, Bob Beatdown is not the quickest plan. Oh, did we bait them into... Is Voidwalker and Dark Confidant enough for them to pop Blast Zone? And then we just try and kill them with Lingering Souls. Yeah, if you want to spend your turn popping Blast Zone. Looking like it. Yep. Okay, so there goes our two two drops, which is fine. We still have Esper Sentinel. They have one unknown in hand. So many Lingering Souls. Uh, ah. We actually get more damage down with an Eldrazi Displacer, so we'll just put that out. And we'll swing him with Esper Sentinel. And then next turn, we just start casting all of the Lingering Souls. I don't like this. Karn the Great Creator. 
don't have a way of stopping that. So they can get something out of their sideboard, like an ensnaring bridge, which would be annoying. We have to find a Skyclave Apparition to get rid of ensnaring bridge. So what do they put in their hand? It's like they're definitely ticking down Karn, and then we're killing Karn. I, I bet you it's ensnaring bridge. Yep. Okay. That is not great. Marsh Flats. Well, we're trying to get those out of our deck now. Okay, so we go to attack, pick Karn off, and we hurt our opponent. Once they play Ensnaring Bridge, we kind of have to hopefully start churning through our deck. Because our, our tokens aren't going to be able to attack for that long. If, if their hand is a land and Ensnaring Bridge, then we're not going to be able to attack even with our 1-1s. Really? Letting us draw a card? I wonder why they're doing this. I mean, Ensnaring Bridge... Oh, no. That's awful. What is this? What is this 10-10 that's in our future? Oh, no, it's just Ensnaring Bridge. With 7 mana to go, so what, they also have Karn? Oh, stone. Okay, so we can't... Now we can't attack, and they can just blow up everything they want. And they're putting a fake counter on bridge. So we literally need to find Skyclave Apparition right now. Did we side out Skyclave Apparition? No, we're not that dumb. Okay. I know we said, like, it really doesn't hit much, but boy, does it come in handy now. Mishra's Factory. Okay, so we're literally just in hope we find it mode. We have three Skyclave Apparitions... So if we find bobs, that'd be fine. If we find skyclaves, obviously that's what we're looking for. Yeah, they're just going to make sure they never have anything in hand. Really, using the other green mana. All right, they're going to go ahead and crack that. Try and find themselves some way to close out the game. Like a big planeswalker or something. So 8th uh, edition is where all of these really annoying cards, like Ensnaring Bridge and Blood Moon, snuck their way into modern. So that's fun. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, that looks like a way to win. They can tick down for one, get rid of three of our things. Oh no, they're just going to kill that, because it's colorless. Okay, we still need to find... in uh, blah. So we find Bupkiss, and we yield through the turn. This game is probably over, but there's a chance we find our answers. Because they only have the one in Snaring Bridge, so we only need one Skyclave Apparition. Looks like they're putting a fake count on uh, Ugin, our boy Eugene. Yep, making sure they uh, make this Wrath very one-sided. Then they tick... Oh, they're going to tick down. Picking down is how they're going to win. Dark Confidant showing up late to work, eh, buddy? Here's Bob. Hopefully that gets him at least to pop O-Stone. I mean, in theory, what they should do is they should pop O-Stone and then ult Ugin. I don't see why they're... Yeah, okay, so they're ulting Ugin first instead of popping O-Stone, which... I mean, if I had some way of, of getting rid of their board is wrong, but I guess they're in just such a win-more mode. There's another O-Stone. There's a Worm Coil. There's Karn. <laughs> just member Bob. Exile a card from our hand. Sure, we don't need it. We get rid of Worm Coil now. Another Ugin? Looks like it. Oh no, it's another Karn Liberated. They, they are really just going after our hand right now. Apparently it's more important to exile our hand than to save a Karn. All right, so we're still on the Skyclave Apparition or Bust plan. Hey, it's your boy, Skyclave Apparition. So what we do is we do just that. We Skyclave Apparition. Our opponent must be just swearing right now. All right, goodbye and snaring bridge. This probably means they pop the O stone to. Oh no, they can't pop the O stone. So we can kill Ugin, but the Karn is just gonna start nipping stuff, which is fine. Let's kill Ugin. Uh, we, we can't. Karn is already on another planet. <laughs> no, no use going after Karn. And we'll lull them into a false sense of security with the Worm Coil Engine. I think they're gonna start popping their uh their mana rocks now that they want cards in their hand. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is also why we didn't path the worm coil because we want them to just draw lands. And again, how many, how many, uh, how many forests is Tron even playing these days? I remember back in the day they played one, and that's when Eldrazi and Taxes really, you know, gave it to them. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead and graveyards. I don't care. Those lingering souls tokens aren't gonna save me anyway. You have a Karn. <laughs> I don't know if you realize this, buddy, but you have a Karn and two O stones. He moves to combat. We path. Sure. Like, how many Worm Coils are in exile? One. Okay, so he's, he's, he's still just drawing. He's trying to find more answers. It's like he knows his Worm Coil engine is not terribly long for this world. Another Spirit Dragon. That's unfortunate. So we lose all our stuff. Okay, so let's take a walk. That walk involves doing this. Don't take any unnecessary damage. And let's get rid of Worm Coil. Also, there used to be a bug with Karn Liberated. Whenever they tried to restart the game, it would just force a draw. Uh, we might... We might see what happens. 
if he restart. I feel like he might try and restart the game. Then again, he has another Spirit Dragon, so we could just win with that. Deals three damage to Sky Cleave Apparition. Okay, so they get they get a three three, which is actually not a small creature, but our Mishra's factory can trade with that. So yes, let this be a lesson to you. Maybe cut Tron off of its color if you're you know given the opportunity. Putting a fake counter on Karn, sure. I was not going to be able to kill that thing anyway, buddy. I guess they can just kill me in two turns with the Illusion Token and with Ugin as well, because they can just bolt me. El Doozy Displacer. If you aren't a sight for sore eyes, my friend. Here comes El Doozy Displacer, which means we can just kill the Illusion Token. And in the meantime, we can attack with the two Spirit Tokens, because we have a plan now. Uh, yeah, we're not going to stop either of those. <laughs> we need to somehow magically do 14 damage. I'm trying to think of what's like a decent mana sink to have, you know, stopped this from getting silly. Because we have all this land in our deck now. We're top decking, which is the problem. And like things like Bob kind of fix that, but not by a ton. I'm also surprised he's not using Karn to start eating my lands. I feel like that's kind of important to his, his win strategy is to just stop me from playing magic. Karn the Great Creator. Okay, well, that might get him a win con. I'm assuming one of his worm coil engines or one of his walking ballistas must be in the sideboard. So I'm beginning to think those fatal pushes that are in the sideboard might become vindicates. I'm wondering if the amount of paths we have is enough to stop Ragavan. Okay, so here comes a giant ballista. I miss the old planeswalker rule. All right, seven, seven ballista. That is darn near lethal. Like what's in our deck that can save us is the question. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm thinking it's nothing. Exile of permanent, there goes Mistress Factory, yep. Okay, there's the thing I thought he should have done like four turns ago. Ah, uh, just to be a jerk, just to be a jerk. Clearly we're not winning guys, but you know, sometimes it's about sending a message. <laughs> and that message is, I have more time on my clock than you. Because if you can't, sanctum, because if you can't win quickly, at least lose very slow if you have more time than your opponent. We'll just go ahead and yield through this turn because we got nothing. I mean, they can shoot down, what happened? Oh, he dealt me three. Uh, oh, oh, and he could just kill me with walking ballista. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that, um, that seems like the correct play. It would appear he saw the line and we go down in game two. So we actually have one more left. And other than we have to kill him quickly, what have we learned? I don't think it makes enough sense to, to play Leyline line of sanctity. I think Kai's Guile is, is win more. I think we're just missing Vindicates because we took them out of the deck because we're like, oh, they don't seem great. And then we were immediately shown why they should be in the deck. <laughs> you know, I'm not great at magic. Three Esper Sentinels. I mean, it's not super aggressive, but it should help us draw a bunch. See, now we're going to see how powerful Esper Sentinel is and how we have a pain land again somehow. <laughs> Thanks, magic gods. I love my Cave of Coilus. I love every time it just knocks me right in the eyeballs. All right, looks like there's no fear from the Tron player. Ooh, Dark Confidant. Is that better than a second Esper Sentinel? Mm. Probably because next turn they're just gonna play a land. So here comes Bob, and now we're playing Card Draw Tribal. And now at this point, we hope we draw an Eldrazi Temple and we can get down Thought Not to your turn three or just a land in general so that we're not just playing an Esper Sentinel next turn. Oh, they're cracking it now, that's weird. It's just getting the missing Tron piece, right? Yeah. So we might just lose to Tron doing Tron things, because even if we draw a Vindicate, we don't have kind of the next piece. So how do we do? We do... Inquisition. Does Inquisition do diddly? I don't think so, because anything they play off of having Tron is going to be much bigger than three. I think the time for Inquisition was a moment ago, whereas now I think the moment is to attack with two creatures. Actually, we might play Inquisition because we might play an Esper Sentinel, because Voidwalker doesn't really do anything. It's just there to be an attacker. Unless we can get them to discard something good, but that's not going to be this turn. So yeah, we'll just play Esper Sentinel and see how bad we're in for it. Hopefully we don't. Orper Orb, Relic of Progenitus Chromatic Spear, Ugin, Karn, the Great Creator, Ulamog. So Torpor Orb, goodbye. And next turn, we're going to see Karn, the Great Creator, and he'll go get the um, Ensnaring Bridge and just play it out. Unless we draw a land, we really can't punish them. Unless he just drew Karn Liberated. That's a weird way to tap mana if you're just playing Karn the Great Creator. Oh, okay. Really? Okay. That's weird. Now are you playing Karn the Great Creator? Because the door is open. Yeah, there's Karn. What are you getting, though? Well, I guess it doesn't matter, because next turn they get to play Ugin. You made it a creature? I, uh, what? <laughs> okay. Please draw a land, Brian. Well, we're drawing so many cards. Yes, we found one. Okay. So, I think we have to kill 
Harn the Great Creator. We'll do this. We have so much white in our hand that we can just get the basic. And yeah, take a damage. Play Skyclave. Nip your thing. I think they still have a land in hand, though. Is it worth trading anything for that sphere? Probably not. Then again, if they play Ugin, we lose all of our stuff anyway, so why not do it now? Sure, I'll offer the trade, because if you just play Ugin, then we just don't live anyway. Sure. All right, that's one less card you got to draw, which is good for me. Yep, here comes Ugin. We get to draw another card, though. Lingering Souls. The problem is Ugin can tick down zero and get rid of Lingering Souls. And now that I say that, we have three of them in our hand, which... Yeah, that's uh, sub-optimal, shall we say. And they have a 4-4, four because four, white has to have balanced cards. All right, what do we do? Marsh Flats. So we can now play the Thought Knot Seer and at least stop Ulamog from eating our lunch. Also, he can't kill Thought Knot Seer with Ugin. He does have a 4-4, four four, though, so we do have to be aware of that. Oh, stone. I still think we take Ulam. He can O stone if he wants. Because I think we have to block because he can just start bolting our face. And of course, that ticks Ugin up too. Yeah, he has so much mana now. Hmm. Well, we've learned something about this deck. We probably want the Vindicates somewhere in the deck. In fact, maybe taking out one Lingering Souls for one Vindicate and having two main might be good. Dramatic Shvia. I don't know why they're digging so hard. They have plenty of different ways to kill us. And like, the key lesson here is. Lingering Souls was really bad, and I just didn't recognize that. Okay, well, they have a Worm Coil now, which is bad. Yep, so bings me for three. They attack with the Illusion Token. We pretty much have to block, which draws them another card. And then we are so far behind the eight ball. I suppose there was a world where we were supposed to Voidwalker and try and play one of their big things. But I have to admit, I haven't played a ton with Voidwalker. Caves. Okay, so here's the thing. He can just minus for one and get rid of everything we're about to do. But I'm just going to hope he forgets how to play magic real quick. So he has us on board, but let's see if he sees it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're playing against somebody who sees it, which is just minus one, clear our board, win the game. Um, sure, we only have a swamp open, so if you wanna keep playing, I'll let you keep playing. I don't think we're gonna drain him for another six minutes, those guys. Oh man, if those were Vindicates in our hand and not Lingering Souls. <laughs> sure, Karn. Karn off, big guy. I think our opponent is just having fun, and he doesn't want the game to end. Exile target permanent, sure. Is this just for style points? I feel like this is just for style points. Just three damage to any target. Okay, so they didn't see it? And now we get to live for another turn because of it? I mean, it doesn't matter. Next turn, he could just spear dragon and kill us. But again, if our opponent is still just gonna let us sit here and play magic, we'll try. All right, so white, who cares? Who cares? Lingering souls. Kapow. And that, and that. And Kapow. Just to be a jerk, I'm going to hit Karn. Take that Karn, you Tron enabling format staple you. All right, you can still, you can still minus Ugin for, nope, he's just going to bolt me with Ugin. Okay, so we lose, which was bound to happen eventually. You know, we're not doing a, you know, tuning thing on this deck because it works so well. Uh, but real quick, we know what we're going to do. We're going to take out two Lingering Souls and only run two. And we're going to put two Vindicates back. And we're going to try the next one like this. So, yeah, let's go for another one. Alrighty then. So, we lost the die roll. All is right in the world. What is our opponent going to do? Our opponent is going to take a while whether they want to decide if they play first or not. Uh, hands full of lands, a dark confidant, and a void walker. I don't think so. This seems a lot more balanced. So, this is removal... Threats and land. So we'll keep this and hope we find the third land. And we'll put Abe's back. Our opponent chose not to play first. That's interesting. What's eight rack? If it's eight rack, we don't have much for it. Uh, Birds of Paradise. I guess I could just be testing. That's why they chose not to play first. All right, crack this. God the Shrine tapped and untap. Skyclave Appetizer. Okay, so got the Shrine tapped. Uh, now we're going to feel real bad if we don't draw that third land, because everything our hand wants to do costs three mana. Plays a basic Swamp. Secure Tribe Elder. This is some kind of Titan deck. We draw a Thoughtseize. Well, we're going to learn what they're doing. Ramp a Grope and... Well, Nisa is going away. You do not get to have a Planeswalker. We don't get to play Magic, though, because Brian put his third land to the bottom of the deck and then proceeded to never draw another land. So there's that. And I can tell you right now, we don't want to put more lands in the deck. 
Field of Ruin. That's unfortunate. I don't want you to Field of Ruin me. Another secure tribe builder. Path of Exile looking really bad. I mean, we just get the planes if they do field us. But yeah, we need any land. Literally any land from our deck. Oh, they're just gonna ramp at growth. They're ramping. Looks like they're gonna ramp out to big green stompy things. Deck, land, 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 land. Dark Confidant, fine deck, fine. Who needs lands anyway? Clearly our opponent gets to have all the lands. We don't get to have all the lands. So here's here's Bob. As our opponent now gets to have roughly 4 million lands, they can play whatever spell they want in Magic the Gathering. And we sit here with a handful of three drops because Brian's bad at magic. Nissa who shakes the world. We need a land so bad for Vindicate. You have no idea. Nissa needs to go away. Because they're just going to make, yeah... So here, here comes Mr. Big Bad. It's us for three. Okay. Deck, we get two draws. We need one land. Oh my god. Okay, sure, deck. I will take it. I will absolutely take two. Uh, vindicate, my friend. Make Nissa go away. We still get hit for three next turn, but we get to downgrade their creature into just a regular forest next turn. Why would they just play it? They just played a forest. So, fielding now? You don't have anything else to do. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Sure, we do have a planes to go get. In fact, that lets us path now, which is even better for us. I feel like our opponent was in a really commanding spot, but kind of punted their way into like a field goal. We'll let them attack, and then we will show them how wrong they were to field us. I mean, they have a million mana. They could do whatever they want. And we have a Bob that might kill us, so this game is far from over. Please don't be Thought Nuts here. Oh, Esper Sentinel, okay. <laughs> But, but Thought Not Seer was there. Uh, we'll go ahead and just Appetizer, the bird. At this point, I'm going for Demoralization Victory. But our opponent is clearly on some sort of, you know, budget brew thing, which is the kind of deck you want to play against when you're playing your, you know, silly tier 7 build. But I have to assume their deck is just full of giant green things and a million different Nissas who will just eat us if given the chance. But I'm expecting an anger scoop if they just... No, this looks like another Nyssa. The Rook. That's not good. But makes a makes a green beast token that we have to then bamf away. And then kill the Gurk with our two creatures. Please don't hit me in the face, Bob. Please, please be nice, Bob. <sighs> Farts. Uh, okay, so clearly you get to have all the lands you want, opponent. Because the beast token is now going away. I gotta go get another basic because their, their deck has to be just full of them. All right. And then we kill their Planeswalker and hope they just top deck a land. But we are we are not doing great. Bob might kill us, which is kind of his whole shtick. You know, you can't get upset at the guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we what are we doing? I think just Voidwalker, which we probably should have done before we attacked. But I'm bad at magic. If they drew a land, we we play we play with fire, just all the fire. All right, Bob, don't make me path you. <sighs> okay, so Caves of Coilos comes out. We move to combat and we just swing with the team. Thought Not Seer is never actually going to do anything because any card they have, they can just play. So we'll go ahead and play out TKS just as a beater because we have to close this game out pretty quick. And then we'll also play Esper Sentinel. If they have Damnation, they have Damnation. Nope, they saw enough. Now they got to scoop the whole game or are we actually going to a sideboard game? Give it a second. Okay, and they're still playing. Now, here's the thing about playing an off-the-wall deck. We're up against, like, green ramp. We have no idea what the black is there for. It might be for another Garuk. It's like super friends. So we have <laughs> one thing we can bring in, with this, which is a pithing needle. Uh, clearly, we can nip some paths for the pushes, because they got tokens, or the lands. So here are the two fatal pushes, which are good. What are we taking out for pithing needle? Might just be the path. I think our hand disruption is fine. Bob's great. Thought Not Seer, if it gets down, is good. Skyclave Apparition is great. Vindicate is good. So I think it's just literally a path or a pithing needle because they're they're like mono green super friends. Oh, is this like a budget Karth the Lion deck? Because it is in Golgari. But yeah, this is why you want to play like an off the wall strategy because your opponent's just going to look at you and go, I, I have nothing to sideboard against you. I have like one card. All right, we are back into it and we have a hand that cannot make colored mana. And we have a worse version of our first hand. And we have our literal first hand. Really? Fine. All right, so we got to put back things. So bibbity, bobbity. It hurts, but boobity. Thank you, deck, for mulling us to absolute oblivion. <laughs> that, that, you know, just chef's kiss. <laughs> and we're going to take damage off our lands the whole time. I think we have to draw cards rather than thought seize. 
I, I think they're just going to ramp next turn, and then next turn we can Thoughtseize, because they have multiple Planeswalkers in their hands. It's fine. Woodland Cemetery, okay, so... If they play a three-mana Planeswalker, then yeah, but I feel like they're just going to ramp. Because Karth is four, I think. Yeah, just ramp. You can ramp. I'm not I'm not going to stop you by stopping your ramp. Duress. <laughs> Crud. Are you kidding me? Uh, oh, I guess we get to play Voidwalker next turn. Oh, man. Brutality. So what, what we're hoping for here is we get to Voidwalker one of their Planeswalkers and win with one of their Planeswalkers. This is the life we lead. <laughs> And we found, out of four caves of Koilos, three of them? Oh my god, it must be my birthday. Okay, so attack with Esper Sentinel. He'll block with the Security Tribe Elder and sack it, which is fine. He's not going to give up a ramping opportunity. He was going to block with that thing anyway. So this was going to die anyway, so forcing him to do it now, I guess, is slightly better. Oh, we can, we can steal a Secure Tribe Elder, though. If it comes down to it, boy, do we have an answer. All right, so they have four mana. They'll have five, which means they can start casting Nissa's, which we don't really have a lot for Nissa turn one. Uh-oh. Blood Chief's Thirst. Huh. So they're afraid of Voidwalker? That's weird. Okay. And they duress again, which is fine, because we have an Eldrazi Displacer, so... Okay. So if he has nothing, then that's good for us. <laughs> Why, deck? Why do you betray me? And on a Malta 4, I guess we're doing better than I thought. You know, I suppose when your hands are just that awful, you, you kind of play what you're dealt. And what we were dealt are pain lands and questionable creatures to be playing in modern. That's what we drew. Vraska. That's just going to kill. Well, there's the Vindicate that'll kill Vraska, but it, it seems like it's going to kill one of our creatures. Which creature, though? Because if you kill Esper Sentinel, then Eldrazi just plays your stall in the field and it kills Vraska. Okay. I'll, I will kill Vraska with Esper Sentinel and not feel bad about it at all. Now, do we Vindicate one of their lands? Or do we... I think we do. I think Vindicating a land here is good because we're trying to keep them off casting their big things. So Godless Shrine, tapped. Taking the same amount of damage anyway. <laughs> vindicate their dually. All right. I mean, this is the best we can hope for. Put them back down to three lands. Oh, oh, they had it anyway. There's Karth. Okay, so it is a Karth deck. They get to look at, like, the top what? Top seven cards? <laughs> really? Really? Seven. Seven cards. And he's a three five. Seems seems fair and balanced. So now we are in in the doo-doo. Just play everything out. They have things that probably make us discard, but... Oh, man. I really have to hope they don't have lands. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh boy. They played a land. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, they're one off of playing Garrick, but I feel like they have other things in hand, like Nis oh, or different Garrick. Well, we get to draw a card, so we got that going for us, which is nice. Voidwalker. You know, day late and a dollar short, big guy. That makes a beast token, but that's fine, because Eldrazi Displacer kills it. How did they get to 3-5 with Karth the Lion? How did that clearly go from... 3-3 three, three to 3-4 three, to 3-5, three, and they went, yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to land on. All right, untap. Marsh Flats, fine. So first things first, let's go ahead and bamf this stupid thing. We don't get to straight up kill Gurk, but we do get to take it to one, which, I mean, small, small victories here. Then we get to play out a Voidwalker, which hopefully finishes the job next turn. But then again, if he gets to poop out Garrick the Cursed... Then he's creating two. He's creating three tokens a turn. Oh, remember that thing I just said? <laughs> that thing I just said that's about to happen? Oh, man. Well, we get to draw another card. Esper Sentinel doing, doing his darndest. Finds his buddy. But now he's making three tokens. Uh, destroy. Yeah, no, nothing I can do about that. And then that makes a beast. Yep. So clearly we kill Garrick Cursed Huntsman with our with our turn. And we hope to draw another Vindicate to take out the other Planeswalker. Now that still leaves a problem because every time I kill one of the Planeswalker, Karth is going to trigger. But we we can't leave them on board. We just lose. So I guess we get two Esper Sentinels. So what's going to happen here is we have to kill one of them. The next turn, hopefully, we can play Garrick off of Voidwalker. Now here's the thing. I think Karth is still going to trigger when I attack, even though... 
it's going to get exiled via Voidwalker, because I think it counts as dying still. Dying and exiling in magic is a very weird thing. Okay, so that actually doesn't trigger Karth, which is good to know. That might change some of our plans. We don't know anything in their hand anymore. But every time they play a spell, hopefully we... I mean, if they play anything, hopefully we get to Ancestral Recall, which will be great. Then again, they can just attack for six and we have to block one. Oh, they're Ancestral Recalling. Sure. Yeah, we don't want to go that low. This looks like removal. What? Why are they duressing? My hand is empty. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Maybe they have a Delve creature. <laughs> Look, it's an empty hand opponent. <laughs> I mean, again, they could just be styling on me, I, I suppose. So they, they swing with the two big guys. Oh, if they don't swing, that would be amazing. Because that means we get to kill Garrick. Nope, here comes the swing. So we have to lose one Esper Sentinel. But next turn, we get to kill Garrick. Pithing Needle. Oh, okay, that changes the plan. So this is Garrick. Primal Hunter. Okay, so Primal Hunter gets turned off. Then we play their Garrick. I actually have to hit play Garrick, apparently. Um, I guess there's no reason not to attack the Cyber. I have to remember to play Garrick, though, before the turn ends. <laughs> I thought it would just play, but apparently it's just can be played. And now we play Garrick. We create two wolf tokens, and that should block our opponent's stuff because he can't activate his Garrick. <laughs> we win the match. Uh, I think our opponent just salt scooped. I don't think that was the correct move. I feel like they could have kept drawing into stuff, but hey, I'll take it. So yeah, deck's running good. That, that was what, four games? Is there anything else we want to change? And is there, there re I don't think there's a reason to play a fifth game. I think the deck is as good as we can expect it to be right now. But the reason I do these decks where I'm, I'm like showing this to you guys is because I want your opinion on what I should change, what I should do, what I should try. I'm sure there's a million cards out there, even the ones that aren't even that expensive that I'm just not thinking of. So how do we make this pile better? How do we take this specific deck and turn it into something really cool and really awesome? Because right now, it's much better than where it was. I don't quite know if it's run it through a league better, but I think it's a lot better than where we started. So I am throwing down the gauntlet, guys. Show me your better black-white Eldrazi list. Show me the obvious things I'm getting wrong. Show me where I should make my cuts and add my things, you know, Thanks, guys. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead and, you know, give us a thumbs up. Uh, hit the, I don't know what the bell does. But yeah, that has been another fun little tuning session with me. And I will catch you guys next time for something fun. I don't know. I've been having fun just doing these weird little kind of toony series. But yeah, I will catch you guys next time.